Hello everybody, this is Ariane Arsenault from La Fée de la Mer and today is the first part of a review series that I will be doing for soap equipment. So just to put you in context, um, in 2018, last year, I went to Atlanta as a speaker for the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetics Guild and I met with one of my uh, equipment supplier, being soap equipment, and we talked and we discussed and then we agreed to do a review series. So all of the items that I'm going to be showing you in this series have been gifted to me for free in exchange for my honest opinion and review and demonstrational videos. And because right now is lip balm season, um, the first part piece of equipment that I'm going to be reviewing and testing out is the Willoway flood tray. Um, the flood tray is actually a lip balm tray, but it's like a really big one. Here it is. It holds a total of 300 lip balm tubes and today we're testing it for the very first time and we're going to be giving it um, our impression. So I would like to introduce you to Andréanne. Come on. <laughs> so I've, I formulated the lip balm many years ago, but now I make. She makes all of the lip balm. So she's our candle, lip balm, body butters, uh, room spray, room spray <laughs> pro. So of course I can't do everything on my own. I need help and she's a part of my team. And so the video, the video will be done with her actually making the lip balms and me filming and supervising and talking, talking. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take a look at making lip balms. Go. The flood tray should be positioned this side up before you start inserting the lip balm tubes in them. And you can see that there's a little groove around each hole. And this is how you can tell uh, which side is the correct side. So if we flip it over. This side is perfectly smooth and there's no grooves around the holes. I would say that most lip balm formulas would work with these types of trays. Um, our formula is made using local beeswax that we get from our local beekeeper. Um, here's a, a chunk of it. And um, before getting the trays, we actually sent a couple of the lip balm tubes to soap equipment because each tray is custom made so that the lip balm tubes will actually really be snug and fit tightly into the trays. So when you place them in and you move them around, nothing moves, everything stays in position. This is our strawberry lip balm base. So it is made with vegetable oils and butters, beeswax, and a flavoring agent. And we're gonna start pouring. Hopefully this goes well. And these are called flood trays because you can actually flood the whole tray, let the mixture harden, and then using the provided scraper, we're gonna be scraping the top off. You can say it. <laughs> okay, so Andreanne just said that this is wonderful and that she's really happy. <laughs> <laughs> because usually we would fill each lip balm tube one by one in a smaller type of a tray uh, with a pipette and it has been maybe like one minute and she's already done filling the tray like uh, two-thirds of the tray um, so I think this will save us a lot of time all right, okay, this looks awesome. Now that the tray is filled, we're gonna wait for it to set and we're gonna come back with the scraper. So before the mix is too firm, but when it is firm enough, we're just gonna scrape everything off and put the excess back into 
our lip balm stock pot that we used uh, to pour the mix. Look at these smooth tops. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, no. nice. So we're just making sure everything is nice, smooth, and clean. And then you want to flip it around to do this side? Yep. Yes, let's flip it around. So when you scrape um, the lip balm off, you kind of have to get this perfect angle. And if you put your scraper uh, too parallel to the, the, the tray, when you lift up, it creates a suction and it creates an irregular uh, surface. But that is easily fixed, so we just take the scraper and kind of, you know, move the mix back and forth. Because this is still pretty soft and gooey, it's really, really easy um, to fix and smooth out the tops of all of these lip balms. So now we're going to leave them for a good, I think, in a half an hour or so until they're really, really firm. And then we're going to pop them out of the tray. For a finishing touch, you can use a heat gun. And... With a low setting, uh, we are going to move across the tray to give a kind of a smooth and, you know, shiny, shiny top to these lip balms. And you just have to be really careful because you do not want to heat too long on a particular spot or you could end up melting the lip balm tubes or damaging the tray. The lip balms have been poured and have been cooling for exactly an hour. We did pop them in the fridge for about 10-15 minutes because we have a really large fridge uh, here that we use to for cosmetic purposes. Uh, but if you don't have one, just you know let them dry for at least two hours and then flip the tray over. And when you flip the trays, the lip balms don't actually touch the, the table, but it's always a good idea to have a clean uh, working surface. But there is a, like a kind of a depth. It's about like, I'd say half an inch. Yeah, so you can flip them over. So we did move things around a little just so Andréanne would be a little bit more comfortable um, capping the tubes. But basically she just wiggles every tube or twists the tube out of the tray. And then we have our caps ready and every lip balm is being capped and then placed into its storage bowl. And, <laughs> yep. and once the bowl is full and we are done, we place a lid. We really love these bowls because they come with a lid. They're, they're from Tupperware <laughs> and they're the grandma bowls. And then we uh, write what's in each bowl. And when it's labeled, labeling time, we just, you know, label lip balms all day. <laughs> but that will be done later on, not today. And here we are pouring another batch. This one is our vanilla lip balm. And again, very easy to pour. Yeah. So it takes roughly between one to two minutes to fill the whole tray and it is recommended to over pour by 1 16 to 1 8 of an inch so that you have headspace to scrape off the tops and have nice smooth lip balms once you're done. For this time around we decided to try using our plastic spatula um, because I find that the metal one is a little bit sharp and I find that it scrapes a little bit the surface of the tray. And this one seems to be working perfectly fine. Yep. <laughs> we also decided to wait 30 minutes before scraping off the tops of this batch rather than 15 minutes for the first one. And I think this also helps with the texture and the sticking um, on the top of the lip bombs so and look at this roll that's so cute it looks like a rolled cake <laughs> a jelly cake 
these are the type of trays that we used before having the lip balm flood tray from soap equipment uh, these hold um, I think 50 lip balm at a time but they're not all perfectly fitted for our lip balm tube so some of them were a little loose and like this one was silicone I actually bought this one without realizing it was silicone and we never use it because it's too like kind of it doesn't hold like I like it to to hold um, so I'll, I'll keep these just in case but they're pretty much gonna be sitting on a shelf now because we now have the flood trays and this is how it's gonna go from now on I really hope you've enjoyed this video where we tested for the first time the lip balm flood trays by Soap Equipment. This is the first review of a series. Uh, the other videos will be mostly aimed toward soap making equipment. And I'm going to give you a quick tour of the other things I'm going to be reviewing and demonstrating for you guys. All of these tools, like the flood tray and the other soap making molds, and the pot tipper, the melting tanks, the light tanks that I'm gonna show you um, are all for larger scale production. Um, let's go take a look at the other equipment that I'm gonna be reviewing. Among the equipment that I have received, I have this workbench with a professional um, block soap cutter. It's probably not how it's called, but um, I'm gonna show you the block molds that go with it. So this will allow me to make really large batches of soap here are the block molds they're on my shelves right now they're just waiting to be um, used for the first time i also have a light tank right here and this one is an oil water jacket melting tank and they both are sitting on top of a professional commercial scale and here are the the screens that go uh, with the scales everything is not set up properly yet but i'm going to go through this with you guys on video but these are part of the equipment that I'm gonna be reviewing and here is Frank meet my new baby um, he's a really really big soap pot tipper and I think he can hold like 96 pounds of soap and so that's gonna be what I'm gonna be using to be filling the block molds that I showed you a little bit earlier so this does not include like all of the material and equipment that I'm going to be reviewing and demonstrating for soap equipment, but it gives you a pretty good general idea. I do have to keep a couple surprises to go along the way, right? So, but most of this soap making equipment from soap equipment is, um, equipment that's going to help you upscale production and be more efficient. And I want to do this review series with creativity in mind and you know, demonstrate that it's possible to make soap in a block mold and still make creative and cool designs. So I'm really, really excited to get getting to learn this new equipment, working with it and sharing it with you. I'm gonna leave a little poll up there and let me know if these are types of videos that you like to see on my channel. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to my channel if that's not already done. I would really appreciate that. And make sure to visit the, the description box down below as I do leave many links and information information uh, for you to find and uh, most often some of the questions that you ask me in the comment section are already answered in the description box because when I edit my videos sometimes I think of something after shooting the video so I'll include it into the description box for you uh, if you have any other questions of course you can always leave them in the comment section thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys again very soon take care